not. Okay, so, mm, so let's start with the first topic. And the first topic will be a summary of the basic flow and heat transfer models. Um, so let me start with the, with the following thing. Uh, we very, very often when talking about fluid flows and heat transfer, we, we do either with heat conduct, uh, conduction, heat convection, uh, or generally with the fluid flow. So let's start with the summary of the differential models by, by writing the, um, the laws that govern, for example, heat conduction. And for heat conduction, you know that the Fourier law applies. Uh, which says that that the heat flux is um, is proportional to the thermal conductivity of the material and the gradient of the temperature field. Uh, then what you can also know is that if you um, if you consider diffusion, then fixed low uh, is the low that that governs the, the diffusion transport. And it's very, very similar. You've got some uh, coefficient the, that the proportionality coefficient that, um, that describes the intensity of the diffusive mixing times the gradient of the concentration of some scalar variable that, that is, is transported by the diffusive transport. Um, Let's focus for a minute on the convection, on the convective transport. For convection, it means that you have got some quantity, whatever it is, it might be like thermal energy, this might be mechanical momentum or, or, or whatever else, um, that is transported with the moving fluid. So what, how we would describe the convective flux is usually governed by, well, if you imagine that you have some domain omega, some domain omega um, and there is some flux uh, and the convective transport of some quantity into the domain, into the domain uh, this can be written by having the velocity times the unit normal vector uh, times, well, whatever this should be, like, say so it's, it's thermal energy. So, um, well, okay, this one, what well, it can be, this can be thermal energy, so basically raw uh, thermal capacity times, uh, times temperature. Mm, but what else? We can also have uh, this doesn't need to be thermal energy. This can be also momentum. And in this case, uh, we would have something like that. We would have vector flux, which is velocity times the unit normal vector because it summarizes how quickly the fluid that transports the quantity moves into the domain times the mechanical momentum, which is density times velocity. Okay, I've started with that uh, because these are the physical mechanisms how, how energy, momentum, or whatever else is usually transported in the, in the field that we want to, to, to model. The, right now, we should come up with the formula for, the, um, for, the typical, for a typical conservation law. And let's, let's do what is always done at the universities. So let's imagine some, some domain omega and the boundary, let's call it gamma, which is the boundary of omega. Uh, and what is a typical con conservation law? Uh, the typical form is that you want to calculate the balance, how much, how much quantity, um, how quickly the amount of this particular quantity uh, changes uh, inside of the volume. So how much of that do we have inside? Is the integral over the domain um, times the, well, let's say the, that the quantity that we are interested in 
is called u, then it's u d omega. The rate of change would be simply taking the parser derivative with respect to time. <coughs> and, <coughs> and let's apply these two mechanisms, how the energy can be transported. Um, if, we take the, if we take the convective flux, this means that we need to write the integral over the boundary of the domain. Of what? How, how is it transported? It's velocity times the unit normal vector times u. And what it says, just see, mm, we've got the boundary. So we, we've got some distribution of, of u at the boundary. For each point on the, at the boundary, we need to calculate the velocity. We need to take the unit normal vector that always points outwards of the domain uh, and just see this term, <coughs> this term says how quickly um, the amount of u increases in omega. So <coughs> the velocity, which is directed with along the coordinate system, uh, times the unit normal vector. If the quantity is flowing into the domain, this means that this scalar product is negative. So to increase the amount of quantity u inside the domain, we need to add minus sign here. Uh, times u is how much of this quantity you've got at the boundary. Let's integrate over the whole boundary. Uh, and that's it for convection. But we need to do the same with the, uh, with the diffusive transport. So whatever this should be, the heat conduction, diffusion, and fixed flow. Um, and what we have is we've got some conductivity. Uh, times the gradient of u. <clears throat> uh, okay, what is the diffusive uh, flux? The diffusion flux, uh, is again, how much quantity is transported towards the domain by diffusion? Uh, so we've got some gradient that is expressed with respect to the, to the x and y coordinate. Uh, but we need to multiply it by the unit normal vector to see how much is re, uh, diffused across the boundary. Uh, let's, let's integrate it over the whole um, boundary and let's see if this is correct in sign. Uh, let's see what does it mean. We've got the unit normal vector n pointing outwards. Uh, and we see if we have if we have positive gradient, I mean, for example, the derivative of u with respect to t is positive. This would mean that well, that u changes some somehow like like that at the boundary. So this is positive uh, gradient times times unit normal vector, which is well here is has got the negative component. Uh, that this means that this product is negative, so it decreases the amount of u, and that's true because of the diffusive the diffusive term uh, for such a for such a concentration distribution means that uh, the diffusion um, takes the quantity out of the domain. So this looks fine. Can we have something else? In the general conservation law? The internal sources. Yeah, exactly. So we might additionally have something that generates U, uh, QV, I mean the volumetric um, flux, uh, sorry, volumetric source times d omega, let's integrate over, over omega. And this is how you start the derivation. Uh, we need to quickly, we need to quickly uh, remind the Gaussian theorem to go to make the another step forward. 
uh, very, very quickly speaking, if you got some fit P times the unit normal vector at the boundary, um, this can be changed into the, um, into the domain integral from the uh, gradient of P times, okay, times D omega, so here D gamma. Uh, or if you've got a vector quantity, V times N of a boundary, this means that it can be changed based on the Gaussian theorem into the divergence of the velocity field times, times the uh, element of the domain. Mm. Okay, so let's apply right now the Gaussian theorem to this, to this one. Um, first of all, what we are considering, okay, let's skip that um, in a moment. Nothing changes here. What we need to do here is, uh, what do we have? Basically, we've got V times U times the unit normal vector. So we've got a vector variable <coughs> that we need to, um, so we need to apply this formula and we come up with minus integral over omega, divergence of the, of the V times U field, uh, where then the unit normal vector disappears times D omega plus, again, mm, we've got a vector quantity here, so we need to apply divergence of lambda times the gradient of u, d omega, plus nothing changes here, qv, d omega. Okay? Everything clear so far? Uh, all right, well, integration is a linear operation, so we can so we can add all integrals together except for one comment. Namely, we've got a time derivative of the integral here, but the domain doesn't change in time, so we can change the order of the integration and the differentiation. So we got something like that. Right now, we've got only integrals over omega. Uh, we sum them up, and, and what we have is the following. Uh, let's move it to the left-hand side. So we've got divergence of V times U. Um, and let's write the other thing on the right-hand side of the equation. Uh, okay, we would need to have a moment of discussion whether we are allowed to skip the integrals or not, uh, but allow me not to make this discussion uh, and omit it. Uh, if you choose the omega domain completely arbitrary and for each domain this integral equation holds, then it means that you really are allowed to, to omit the integrals and the differential equation will also um, be right. So what we come up with is the following. P times U equals the divergence from the gradient U plus QV. This should be a plus after the DU over DP from the left hand side. Mm -hmm, thank you. Okay, 
looks familiar. And there are a couple of interesting things to mention right now. Well, first of all, first of all, what we've got here is the time derivative. So it is responsible for all, all the um, unsteadiness in the, in the system that we want to account for. If we've got the steady state, obviously this term disappears, we've got the steady state equation. Uh, then, so let's, let's write it down, time derivative. Uh, the second term, it is a convective derivative. Is the convective derivative? So we know that this term represents all the convective mechanism of transport. Then we've got the diffusion, diffusion term. And finally, we've got the source term, or uh, sometimes referred to as, uh, as the reaction term, uh, especially if it involves some, uh, some coupling with the, with the um, quantity that you solve for. Mm. Okay, let's, um, let's see the following thing. Namely, what well, is very, very often the case, uh, if you consider equations like that at the university, is saying that, okay, what happens if lambda is constant? If lambda is constant, then you can obviously take it out of the differentiation, uh, and then divergence of the gradient is basically Lapla Laplacian, um, and we come up with the, I need some more space at the blackboard, I need to erase something. So the simplifications that we often deal with is let's assume that, uh, that lambda is constant. Then, and for a moment, let's omit uh, time unsteadiness and the convective term and this heat, uh, and the, well, heat source, uh, whatever source term. Mm, then this means that we got something like that, what is basically often written like that, and in that case would be, would be zero. Uh, obviously, we come up to the Laplace equation that, that governs the diffusive transport. Uh, if you've got both convection and diffusion, then you come up with, with the um, very popular advection diffusion equation and the advection diffusion equation taken from that one would be, uh, or let's make one more simplification that, that is very, very often. Uh, if you assume that, how can you represent this term? Obviously, it's like taking the, it's like differentiating, differentiation of the product of two quant quantities. So one of them would be, and divergence of velocity times u plus v times uh, gradient of u. Uh, so let's make one more simplification. Let's assume that the divergence of velocity is zero. What does it represent? That it's not uh, compressive, the fluid or... Exactly. The fluid is not compressive, so, so what it means is that you've got constant density. Very, very often, well, actually, basically all, um, all liquids, uh, very, very often the gases with uh, 
uh, within the, the range of Mach numbers uh, uh, less than 0 0.3, so the whole subsonic gas flows. Um, so if you've got divergence of the velocity field equal to zero, then this term disappears. And very, very often the advection diffusion equation is written in the following form. Advection diffusion uh, is written like the advection velocity times the gradient of the quantity that is transported by convective mechanisms. And this one equals gradient and Laplacian of the um, of the of u. That's very very often represented this way, uh, but I strongly want to to point to to this form because this one is much more general, and this one allows you to account for all the nonlinear effects. Like if you consider if you consider um, heat conduction, especially in gases, then, then uh, diffusivity, thermal diffusivity, viscosity, etc. These are the coefficients that it really depend on temperature. So it's not very, very uh, common in engineering simulations to have it absolutely constant. Um, and if you get used to this form, then, then you can really account for all these effects without any simplifications that are nice for, for uh, analytical discussions and academic examples, but not very, very useful. Like, they are very, very useful for under, understanding the physics and the numerical methods, but, but they are not very, very common in the engineering practice later on. Mm. With the convective term, I do not need to stick to this form because really in many, many situations, we deal with incompressible flows, especially in the applications that we usually deal with. Uh, very, very often these are incompressible flows, so this one looks already, already good. Any questions to the, what I have said until now? No. Okay. Um, the 1D representation of that uh, in 1D, let me write it a bit differently. Um, typically, like the practice is that very, very often in advection diffusion equation, you, you denote the advection velocity by A. So it would be D, dx equals lambda, the second derivative of u with respect to, to x. Uh, some more simplifications. Um, already mentioned the Laplace equation. How do you call this equation with the source term on the right hand side? Exactly. I would be okay. And I think it's important to discuss the boundary conditions that can be applied to such a problem. And there are basically three types of boundary conditions. Just let me erase some more space on the blackboard or whiteboard. Uh, let me rewrite the equation. Okay, well, plus the source term, whatever. The boundary conditions that apply 
What's the first type? Mm -hmm. Exactly. Uh, so the first, first type, band recognition, uh, usually, usually described as the Dirichlet band recognition. Uh, it means that we prescribe the value of the of the quant quantity at some portion of the boundary. So we say that okay, let's say u is equal to some w that we know. Um, this one means u at the wall. Well, or maybe not wall, but boundary. Is equal to W. The, the other type of boundary condition, they are called second type boundary condition. Uh, and this one is referred to as Neumann boundary condition. What does it prescribe? Yeah, it prescribes the derivative. Of the solution. So basically, in the physical applications, uh, it means that we prescribe the flux or the quantity at the at the boundary, and uh, it's defined the following way. Namely, we say minus lambda times gradient of u times the unit normal vector at the boundary is equal to something that we know, and it's in the physical interpretation and physical applications is the, the, the flux that we want to prescribe. Let it be the diffusive flux, let it be um, heat, um, heat flux through the boundary that is, that is put into the domain. And then we've got the third type boundary conditions. Known as the Robin boundary condition. Uh, An interesting note is it's not the mixed boundary condition. A mixed boundary condition is uh, mixed boundary conditions for a partial differential equation uh, are usually uh, this term is usually used if you want to apply the Dirichlet boundary condition at, at some portion of the boundary. And the other type of, the, of a different boundary condition at the other portion of the, of the boundary, then you say that the problem has got mixed boundary conditions. Uh, but the Robin boundary condition is not a mixed uh, boundary condition. It's, uh, it's just the third, third type. And it, what it does, yes, it actually mixes these two, which means that you prescribe the linear combination of the, uh, of the flux. plus some coefficient times the um, function that you look for itself. And this one is equal to something that you know. So basically you know, well, that's the coefficient in the equation, uh, but you know that and you know that. A typical example, a typical example is for the um, a typical example is uh, when you are solving for heat transfer uh, and you've got, let's say we're interested in heat conduction in the solid, but you've got some boundary condition that you want to specify here where it, where it, um, where it, it is adjacent to, the, to air or some liquid. And you've got the heat transfer coefficient alpha at the boundary, and you know that that the air that surrounds it has got some temperature in the like some steady state temperature. Uh, so then, very very often it's written that the 
heat transfer, um, that the thermal flux is uh, is what well, is proportional to the heat transfer coefficient times temperature of the solid at the boundary minus T infinity, the temperature of the air that is adjacent to the, to the solid. Uh, as you can see, this one does not look immediately like that. Uh, but it can be easily, it can be easily um, expressed by the uh, by the flux that needs to be represented here at the boundary inside of the domain, and where well, this one is some constant, and basically the constant is this one multiplied by that, and this term is having something proportional to the temperature at the boundary, the temperature that you do not know. And so much heat needs to be uh, inserted into the domain. Okay, questions? So everything is clear or nothing is clear? Mm. Uh, shouldn't there be a minus with the bottom in the bottom equation because this one? Yeah, because in such situation. Yeah, like yeah, yeah, like depends on. Uh, yeah, it should be. <laughs> okay, let's move on. 